This is the new Super Hammer from Dake. And as you can see, it is a lot lighter, a lot more adjustable, a lot more maneuverable than that huge Pull Max. But this is not just some cheap little hobbyist toy here that's going to go out on you in a few years. No, this is a professional grade tool built for years of heavy use. And it'll form steel up to 16 gauge and aluminum up to 11 gauge. So you'll not only be able to do hoods and fenders, but you'll also be able to do floors and firewalls and heavier stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now, the best thing about a power hammer is it will do in just a few minutes what it would take you hours to do with a sandbag and a mallet. And the key is in the dies. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, basically, a power hammer consists of two dies that come together to shape metal. And by changing the dies, you can stretch metal, you can shrink it, you can dome it, you can run a bead in it, you can cut louvers in it. <laughs> you can do pretty much whatever you want to do. Now, the dies that I've got here, notice I have a domed die, then I've got one with urethane. And when these come together, they basically do the same thing that a sandbag and a mallet do to put a shape into a piece of sheet metal. Check it out. The thing that you notice about this power hammer over most of the ones you see, it's not quiet it is. You don't need hearing protection. It's very, very smooth. Not violent. And look at this, how nicely it's putting this dome in here. And in just a few minutes, here's what you got. Take a look at this. It could be the start of a fender or a hood scoop or whatever. Do you know how long it would have taken you to do this with a sandbag and a mallet? Man. Now, some of you are probably thinking, you know, that's great. But you can stretch and shape metal like this with a sandbag and mallet. So why would I go to the extra cost of a power hammer? It's a good question. The answer is this guy here will shrink metal just as quick and easy as it stretches it. That's what we're going to do next. OK, say you want to make a piece like this fender that curves down on the ends. Well, the only way to get this shape and keep this flange is you have to shrink it on this flange, too. That will allow the fender to curve down, which means you need a shrinking die. Now, this is called a thumbnail shrinking die. You see how they go together? And the way it works is when you push the metal in, it bends the metal up in the center. When you pull it back, it hammers it back together and shrinks it. Now, anytime you're making a panel, you don't just want to go in at random and start doing a panel. There'll be no way to control the shrinkage. What you want to do is draw out some sort of a grid like this to help you control it. Now, this particular grid is for a piece like the front of a fender or a gas tank that's going to come up and roll down in front. Now, obviously, with a shape like that, you're going to have to shrink it more on this outer edge than you will in the center. And having this grid will help you know where you've been and how much you've shrunk it. All right, let's get to it. Now, we've already showed you how well it stretches and shapes metal. Now we're going to show you how well it shrinks and shapes metal. Watch your feet there, man. <laughs> On the first pass, we'll go all the way to our innermost line and work our way back. Believe it or not, that is how you want it to look after the first pass. Take a look. We got nice shrinkage right around this innermost line. That is what we were after. Of course, the rest of it looks like a potato chip. But we're going to take care of that by shrinking to this line, then to that one, then to that one. It's going to draw it all in. With each consecutive pass, just work more out to the edge, shrinking the edge. And in a few minutes, you'll have an incredible shape taking place. And once again, in just a few short minutes, you're ready to take a look at it. Now, <laughs> look how much we actually shrank that metal down. And we could have kept going. You keep running it through, it'll just keep shrinking it down. Now, once you have your shape roughed in like this, all you have to do is roll it through an English wheel. That'll smooth it all out. Or put on some planishing dies, and you can hammer it out smooth just like this, and you're going to be all finished. A power hammer will save you so much time and money you're not going to believe it, especially if you were going to pay somebody to make some panels for you. 
Now, obviously, if you're not into working metal, you don't need a power hammer. But if you want to build your own panels and work that metal, this is one of the best investments you're ever going to make.